another day. <sighs> didn't, didn't go to sleep till like one or two o'clock in the morning last night. And got woke up right around 8 a.m. Feeling like I should take a nap. Good idea. I, I think uh, those like me who uh, pro national divorce kind of people. Uh, I think we'll, if there are you know others, eventually, <laughs> you know, none of you listen to uh, so far on my uh, YouTube's, but I had a good idea. Teaming up with uh, Native Americans. Cause they're, they're already their own country. <laughs> more effective way of not being part of the communist empire. Maybe even being able to uh, set yourself set ourselves up to be new tribes. Not necessarily have to be part of members of the other tribes, new tribes. Good idea. Interesting thought. I'm really tired. a solar powered phone charger before I hit the road <clears throat> why well, is a living car and uh, it, it's been working it's just now it will it's not like charging the cell phone it will do it for like a minute and then it's not charging the cell phone and there's nothing about it and I long since don't have the manual there's nothing about it that it explains to me whether or not it's empty, how full it is, to know whether or not it, what about it is not working right. <clears throat> yeah, I can show it. Hopefully you saw that. <laughs> yeah. So, um... That's a solar, little solar battery pack thing. It's got a little battery and solar panels. And all it does is, a, you know, charge cell phones. Cuts down on me trying to charge my cell phone in, in, the, rest, in the rest stop place, the truck stop. And my car has issues charging the cell phone. A, gas-wise, it has to be running. It won't charge it off, which is good. But it's got to be in just the right position in that whole thing to charge. And periodically, it just stops doing it. So, uh, phone charging issues. Um, someone... Um, like I want, I follow some uh, YouTubers that are talk about truck driving, and uh, one of them, I'm not going to mention which one, uh, stupidest thing I've I thought I've had in a while of what they're saying, the stupidest thought they that I've come across in a while, and I know my immediate reaction to it is this is how inconvenient evil incon just out there to be inconvenient people think um, and it was a survey on what would what makes you stop at a truck stop various options sit down restaurant fast food 
clean bathrooms. And then it also had free parking. The day that truck drivers have to pay to park the truck is the day we just pull over on the side of the road. All of it will go out of business. It amazes me how much comes down to the truck driver. Everything's a truck driver's fault. All sorts of ways of making it a truck, a truck driver has to spend money on it. The truck driver, uh, uh, no, and that's just the icing on the cake, you know, blaming them for loads and unloads and shit. But, the truck driver drives. You want to complain about what's in the trailer or not in the trailer? That is the people that were trained and have the equipment to load it in the first place. You want to complain about how much the, the truck and trailer weighs being overweight? Why don't you put a scale at all those loading places? Why don't you insist all the companies loading up those trailers have to have a scale to check whether or not they did their job right? Because that is their job. Truck drivers don't have the equipment. They shouldn't have to have the training to be loading and unloading trucks. They simply drive. And just in case you, 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 you like missed it, stupid out there a lot of you can't drive you are a hazard you are a, a problem you are an accident waiting to happen including on purpose not so much of an accident then huh just stopping in front of a semi truck or and cutting it off trying to be in front of it way too close and then the idiots that drive into the back of it or try uh, try to drive around it when it's turning stupid stop driving uber you're too dumb to operate a vehicle but that really that that stupid thought that what would make you truck makes you stop at a truck stop it it's a truck stop trucks can stop there the day they can't stop there you know because they have to pay for it is the day there ain't no truck stops <laughs> this is not complicated here <laughs> you want us to buy shit there it, well I've been a truck driver but you want them to buy shit there you will figure out how to be a convenient <laughs> I mean, that is part of the name of a convenience store. You, you, you kind of have to be convenient, not inconvenient. Yeah. I'm not going to mention. <laughs> but. It's, it's, it's just. It's how inconvenient people think. How. It's like. They don't, their goal isn't to be helpful, functional, profitable, logical. Their goal is to be as inconvenient and as problemsome as possible. And I think that particular YouTube, and I, I agree, I need to stop following it. It obviously pushes my buttons, but there ain't there ain't a lot out there, and Google has been YouTube, Google. It's all the same company, YouTube and Google and Google Maps. Google has been getting rid of being basically anything but propaganda. I mean, Flying J doesn't show up on Google at all. In fact, I'm on a Flying J. I look on Google Maps as far as it's concerned, that Flying J isn't here. Just Denny's. Which tells if you're, it's filtering out whatever it deems 
not uh, helpful to the Communist Manifesto. So, just like on Google when you search for stuff, it, you have to figure out how to use Google to get the information because it's the only option and get around Google filtering out all the answers because they don't want you to know that. For one of the topics I, I'm into researching from this recent experience with Biden is Russia. Russia previously, before there was Biden president, was there, before Biden was a blip on the national anything, Russia is considered an ally, right up there with England. So suddenly, just saying you know, England is an enemy and and, and they're corrupt and, and they're bad, and they're doing this takeover and the war and all that in Ukraine. All that. It's just an excuse to funnel money and get NATO to harass Russia, to get NATO into places that can harass Russia. I've done, I'm into research in Russia right now, I'm to the point that I'm actually trying to learn the language because it will make it a lot easier for me to find information that's accurate if I can read at least in here the the language I understand it I can't say any of it can't pronounce it uh -uh. the stuff I found YouTube was in babble <clears throat> uh, I don't hear the differences between hard letters and soft lettering wise of pronunciation letters. I don't hear the difference. It's the same sound to me. Um, anyway, uh, it's frustrating. And, um, YouTube wise, is, there's less content. YouTube is actively trying to not have anything to watch on YouTube. YouTube is actively trying to commit economic suicide on, on for the goal of towing the line of propaganda, limiting the any you know clients, the you, people who watch YouTube, limiting them from being informed, limiting them from communicating with each other, and yes, I'm making a YouTube. But I may post these videos somewhere else. Maybe switch to Rumble or something. It's just it's, there aren't a lot of options. And I'm sure a lot of good, functional, convenient, logical, smart people were involved in making YouTube in the first place. And back in the day, Yahoo. But somehow, some way, the Democrats figure out how to take over, infiltrate, control everything we build and either shut it down or use it against us. It amazes me because they are profoundly stupid. It amazes me how smart they can be when they're, well, quite a bit of them are profoundly stupid. Uh, it's been a quiet day and slightly irritable. Kind of, kind of really, really starved for mentally wise of, because I'm a nerd. I like to learn and Google being the way it is now, can't find things on, on maps, Google or YouTube. Um, 
and of course it's there isn't a lot of options out there everyone is busy working themselves to death so they're not necessarily have the time to, to really get in the trenches about it the writers um, strike stuff of not letting writers have um, rights royalty rights to their creativity and that's not just affecting Hollywood which I've long since so don't watch it either. Uh, I couldn't tell you the last movie I saw that, that, that it's, it's been that long I mean I know I, I, I quit TV in 07 Obama was uh, running for president and introduced I watched on on the news more than you know, more than one news said it national news uh, the king of Saudi Arabia was proud to introduce our next president Barack Hussein Obama I was done watching TV since had problems with, with there's long since been problems in Hollywood lots of movies so I don't watch this stuff but the strikes are I agree with them striking I agree they need to have rights they need to be paid royalties for their creativity but absolutely meanwhile I'm starving for entertainment and the last decent thing I have seen was Vampire Diaries. Originals was okay. It was reasonably good. Vampire Diaries was awesome. And, and I think the thing that really makes Vampire Diaries awesome is uh, the character depth. The, you, you start to really get to know the characters and they're very through and through deep there, there's you, you can tell this was really truly based on some people <laughs> there's definitely trueness of the, at least the characters to it it's, they are real yeah, especially Damien The brother, David Edward, something, I can't remember his name now, <laughs> whatever his name was, he was kind of bland. Um, of course, there are bland people. He was realistically bland, but he was kind of bland. Elena, I didn't like Elena. A, for switching brothers. That's not okay with me. But B, It's like she wasn't based on a real character, I guess, a real person. You know, she wasn't inspired. She was filler. She feels like filler. But otherwise, the characters, Bonnie, for example, Caroline, there's depth there. They're tangible, feelable, empathizable, understandable characters. I wasn't really into legacy that much, so and I, I definitely haven't seen much more from the first season. This one. Don't care. Um but it's it's been a short things to watch, to learn about. There aren't books to read. There's no music to listen to. There's no shows to watch. There's no movies to watch. It's just been a years and years now of a, a lack of creativity. And it's 
uncomfortable <laughs> to experience. It's just no fun anymore. <laughs> Long since I haven't had fun. my nerves. Inconvenient people. And uh, otherwise it's been a quiet day. I don't use a rear view Even before I, I went back, I learned how to be a drug driver. I, I have no use for a rear view mirror. I use the side mirrors, backup camera, got one, and that's it. Which I think that, that's another interesting thing about the new and improved semis. And that, you know, New freight liners and all that. And Peterbilts. You know, they buy new trailers too. All, all trailers pretty much at this point have GPS. You know, you hook up electrical, you it's got GPS going. Uh, it's, it's ready. It's, they are actively avoiding those trailers having back. They are specifically, actively, with the goal, trying to be as inconvenient to back that thing up as possible. Because that's an easy, life is better. Backup camera on trailers. Just hook up the electrical and you'll be able to back that thing up. Inconvenient out there. Mm. Specific goal of being as problematic as possible. <clears throat> I haven't eaten today other than I had some ice cream. I'm getting back into my route because I've been on an eating binge. Like, like I said, I, I, I binge or I starve. That's one of the two things I do. I'm getting back into my routine of phase of, of not eating so I, I had milk for breakfast um, ice cream for breakfast lunch dinner kind of food wise I had it for lunch so I've had ice cream I've had milk and I've had some soda that's it and plenty of cigarettes which, by the way, here's some useful information if you're a smoker. Now, I don't go to uh, uh, smoke shops. I, I, I typically in life get stuff delivered. And, and, and when I have been in a tobacco smoke shop place, it has not been the most welcoming experience. They seem to always... Which something about being them they have everything behind glass or well you know see through stuff anyway everything is locked up and you have to specifically know what you're looking for which if you're trying to learn and find and try new things and find cheaper and things like that that is not something I experience they don't give you advice they don't want to talk to you they want you to get in ask for what you want pay for it and get out they are not salesmen and people orient that would be too much like social skills and uh, friendliness it's just my experience are not friendly people <laughs> um, I do know online at least you can get I can get uh, what are called filtered cigars in case you didn't know smokers cigarettes are taxed on any definition of sanity. Cigars are not. Cigars are a lot cheaper. Now, now I'm not talking 
sweet mild or whatever that those cigars are that they are technically filtered cigars but they're they're not what i'm talking about and those because you get them at the gas stations and stuff like that those are expensive too like you know you get it in, at somewhere it's supposed to be convenient to have it it's more expensive it's gotta be more money it can't possibly be convenient that'd be too much like being a convenience store <laughs> so but there is things called filtered cigars they're shaped like cigarettes they're not wrapped in paper they're wrapped in tobacco so they're brown but they're shaped like and sized like cigarettes so everything you feel about them is cigarettes I will mention they are usually, the, the, it's too um, tightly compact, so they are harder to inhale. You have to suck harder to get anything through them and, the, and keep them lit and get the smoke into you. But, you know, 15 to $30 a carton, I, I, can, I can work on that. <laughs> it's a lot more affordable. Like, Back in the 90s or something, you paid 20 bucks for a carton of cigarettes. I think I'm done talking.